So there's a recent book by Luca Tatio that I want to talk about in this video. Very brief mention, I wouldn't call it a review. The book is called A Theory of Imagining, Knowing, and Understanding. And it is, a, in my opinion, a very nice place to start uh, reading, learning about imagination. The place of imagination in a, in a general psychology, a big picture of uh, human psychological capacities. Where is the place of imagination? So. In, since ancient um, ancient sources, philosophical texts like Aristotle's *The Anima*, we read uh, statements like "imagination is between sensation, sensory perceptions, and intellect." And Tatio uh, explores these kinds of statements. And just because uh, we say that imagination is between intellect and sensation itself doesn't immediately make sense. Um, so I said that it is this book is a nice place. To begin learning about imagination because Tatio does some important basic things with regards to the concept of imagination. How is it that we should think about this concept? One of the first things that he does in the book is that he refutes the dichotomy, uh, the opposition between imagination and reason and rationality. He says that these, these are not opposite to each other. Just because something is imaginative doesn't make it antithetical or opposite to reason and rationality. Why? Because in many cases, both in science and in art and in philosophy, there's a coordination and cooperation between imaginative thinking and unimaginative thinking. These two work hand in hand in coordination and they give, they give results that might be artistic, philosophical, scientific. So he, uh, he does foundational things like that, getting rid of the, the false dichotomy. He also uh, challenges a dichotomy, uh, not dichotomy, the association between imagination and creativity. He uses the example of Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh, why is it a, a nice, useful example? A book like Fifty Shades of Grey, uh, uh, what is it, the genre, erotica, like a best-selling uh, erotic, erotic fiction, it is an exercise, a very intense exercise of imagination. It engages our imagination, but it is completely not original. It is not creative. So what is the lesson in that? The lesson is that something that is imaginative is not necessarily creative. So I might instruct you to imagine something. I will say things like, once upon a time, there were like three little dwarfs, or once upon a time, there was a philosopher in a foreign land. And you are being instructed. Your imagination is being guided by somebody else. That means you can be imaginative, but not original and not creative. Uh, there are many examples in this, uh, in this book. There's an example of Mendeleev, the, the, the chemist who organized elements in chemistry according to the atomic numbers. So once we have something like an organization, let's say you have uh, all the elements in chemistry, you organize them in such a way, you can use that organization, that table of elements, as a basis, like a scaffold, a structure, that then you imaginatively work with it to find its gaps. Um, like you arrange all the colors that you have seen in your life. You arrange it all according to shade, the uh, elements of color. And you, in this imaginative example, imagine there are gaps in that what you experience, the colors that you have uh, actually experienced. So there are gaps there. Even though there are colors that you haven't actually seen, experienced in real life, we can use imagination to fill those gaps. So uh, imagination in this way can be coupled with what you have experienced with the help of some organizing principles, like organizing chemical elements or organizing shades of different colors according to saturation, hue, brightness, to fill in the gaps. Two more things I'll mention about this book. Uh, basically, I, I'd like to entice you to read it because I, I enjoy reading it. Tatio talks about how our imagination uh, operates within a uh, uniquely linguistic or discursive human reality. So human reality, we might see it as uh, raw sensation or perception, but our human experience, the way we experience reality, has a structure, and that structure is shaped uh, with our language, with the structure of our language, with the structure of our discourse. Discourse is a little bit different from language because when I talk about language, you, you might still imagine a private experience, a private structuring, but when I mention the word discourse, the concept discourse is not private. So it includes me, you, other people, 
they are all part of this conversation or discourse. This is how our uh, imagination, the basis of our imagination is structured. So whatever we imagine, we can use this basic structure to push a little bit beyond it. Now, ta there's another concept uh, or set of concepts that uh, Tatu introduces in relation to imagination, and that is the thought experiment. Thought experiment is when we conduct an experiment basically in our own mind. And there are several, there are books written on this topic of imag uh, the imaginative experience or thought experiments. And many scientists have, including Einstein, including Galileo, they have actually discovered things just by running an experiment in their minds. This famous experiment of Galileo who says, imagine we go on top of a very uh, high building and we attach two stones to each other and we drop both stones at the same time. So he uses that experiment, thought experiments to prove that this, the acceleration, the, the rate at which objects fall down towards the ground shouldn't depend on their weight. That's a very nice example of thought experiments. So people like uh, uh, Brown, I don't remember his uh, first name, he, he wrote the book Laboratory of the Mind. They make a, an extensive case uh, about how thought experiments can reveal, can produce new knowledge. And I think Tatu is uh, in their camp. He believes that there is a unique role in imaginative thinking, in understanding new things, getting to know new things. That's why the title of the book is not just a theory of imagination. It is a theory of imagining, knowing, and understanding. So these are not three different functions of our mind, but at any given moment, at any object that is in front of us, those three aspects, we can think about them as three sides, three dimensions of our relationship with our the situation or our objects of thinking. Uh, at the same time that we are getting to know something, there is an imaginative side to that relationship between our mind and the objects. The book ends with uh, two very nice commentaries. The main text, Tateo's own text, is very casual, very structured. It actually reads like a series of lecture notes. It is not trying to be uh, definitive, it is not trying to be exhaustive, it's trying to give us a starting point. But the book ends with two commentaries written by other authors, and these commentaries are more polished, they are more structured, and they're trying to do something uh, that is more organized. Okay, uh, I think that's, a, that's a, good, it's a good enticement for the book, and I, um, I might, uh, in, in, in the next video, I might talk about another book about imagination that is, uh, that is a book by Jean-Paul Sartre called Imag Imaginary. Uh, so until then, Thank you for listening.